is a South Korean born American filmmaker and SES who is truly a standout amongst his compatriots in the industry today. Despite having only released two feature films in his career, he has, in my mind, been able to establish his own style through the use of certain aspects throughout his work. Before his journey into directing, he was known for his video essays, some of which revolved around other filmmakers such as Robert Bresson, Ingmar Bergman, and Yasujiro Ozu. I'll be explaining why he personally is one of my favorite artists in cinema today, and how different elements of his work has contributed to his already distinct style. Koganada has released two future films in his career so far, Columbus and After Yang, both of which has cemented their place in my all-time favorite film list. There will be mild to moderate spoilers for the films I am about to discuss, so proceed with caution if you have not seen any of these films on the screen. Koganada's prior work has cemented his status as a film expert and he has been dubbed a professor by actor Colin Farrell regarding his love of the art form. The name Koganada itself is a moniker for Japanese screenwriter Kogo Nada, who is commonly associated with the director I will mention shortly. His knowledge of the subject has certainly paid off and the inspiration from legendary directors combined with the incorporation of his own techniques lead his films to be truly ethereal and touching experiences. When discussing Columbus, the work of Japanese director Yasujiro Ozu is often brought up in discussion. In particular, his 1951 masterpiece Early Summer has been stated by Koganada as the main inspiration for the film. The story of Columbus surrounds two lost souls who find peace within each other and their surroundings. Columbus, Indiana is referred to many as a mecca of modern architecture, and it's even stated by John Cho's character Jin in the film here. You familiar with his work? No, but I'm really interested in architecture been to almost all the talks the past few years. Yeah, I hear this town is quite the mecca. Ozu's work often surrounds complex family relationships, and the stories featured in them are oftentimes intertwined with various societal issues. Early Summer focuses on Noriko, a woman struggling to deal with pressure from her family and finding her place in post-World War II Japan. She has difficulty in gaining approval from others regarding her decisions, much like Jin. From Jin's perspective, his experience as a Korean-American creates a strain on his relationship with his dying father and he's very disconnected from the people and places around him. This changes when he meets Casey, an architecture lover who forms a bond with him and changes his perspective. This scene of the bank features one of my favorite exchanges in cinema history. God, shut up, I'm just trying to tell you about this building. Okay, stop with the tour guide mode for a second. I'm not in a mode. You said this is one of your favorite buildings. It is. Why? It's one of the first modernist banks in the United States. No, no, that can't be it. Do you like this building intellectually because of all the facts? No. I'm also moved by it. Yes. Yes, tell me about that. What moves you? I thought you hated architecture. Uh, I do. But I'm interested in what moves you, particularly about a building. Both films have incredibly emotionally backed, nuanced, and collective performances that elevate the art of acting to another level. Setsuko Hara, Chiyoshi Ryu, Haley Lou Richardson, and John Cho all deliver breathtaking performances which explore every avenue of raw, unfiltered acting. The parallels between the complicated nature of deep relationships highlight how powerful the writing and direction are, and Columbus is a prime example of how a main factor of art is taking inspiration from others while adding your own dynamic to it. In terms of behind the camera, another similarity between the two comes from the use of passageways. Here's an excerpt from Koganada's very own video essay, along with some shots of Columbus to give you an idea. The prominence of negative space and how the idea of architecture is the structuring of emptiness allows a truly simple technique to enhance the story greatly. Both of the films' use of calming and ethereal cinematography is connected to the last segment, and after Yang, the concept of memory plays a key role in the story. Yang's memory bank is filled with brief glimpses of his life, all of which are short yet emotionally resonating. Two filmmakers immediately sprang to my mind upon watching this scene, Terrence Malick and Jonas Mikas. Terrence Malick, one of my favorite directors, uses visuals to create astounding emotion, and many of his later features focus on a less narrative-heavy approach, something we need more in today's content-heavy age. His films strive to form an experience, something that the viewer can feel deep down inside. Jonas Mikas' 2000 film, 
As I was moving ahead occasionally, I saw Brief Glimpses of Beauty, is an experimental documentary composed of filmed moments throughout decades of his life. Both directors use quick cutting techniques to enhance these moments. Their work is so important to me because it offers something intangible, truly feeling. I have never been able, really, to figure out <laughs> where my life begins and where it ends. I have never, never been able to figure it all out. So when I began now to put all these roles of film together, the first idea was to keep them chronological. But then I gave up, and I just began splicing them together. Similarly to Mikas's film, in After Yang, there isn't necessarily anything extravagant that is revealed to us within Yang's memory. These brief glimpses of beauty contain more than what we see on the screen, but the meaning lies behind the emotional experience of the event. Ada, played by Haley Lou Richardson, is a clone who frequently appears in these memories and is seemingly just completing a mundane task, but to Yang, these moments are what make him. Malik's work has the ability to create the smallest of moments into a profound experience. Here's a comparison from The Tree of Life to After Yang. Films like Song to Song and Night of Cups feature characters wandering around or searching for themselves, yet there's nothing else I'd rather watch. Koganada's innate ability to make so-called simple situations that contain so much meaning is what cinema should be about. And after Yang, it's the significance of Yang's memories, but not the events themselves, the feelings behind them that have the meaning. In Columbus, it's the bonding not over the physical architecture itself, but how its present brings out the emotion in humans. When you see acting compilations on YouTube, usually performances that highlight an extreme catharsis, oftentimes sadness or anger, make up a majority of the video. Showing calmness or internally acting isn't highlighted as much, and these performances, unfortunately, get overlooked sometimes. High-profile actors like Tony Lung and many of the non-professional actors featured in Tide director Joe's films are wonderful examples of these types of performances. Koganada's films are filled with these. Haley Lou Richardson's performance as Casey exhibits a young woman's difficult choice to stay with her mother or go on her own path, and you can feel the weight of her problems when simply looking at her. Justin H. Min's performance as the android Yang shows the uniqueness of being human and what it means to be Asian. Colin Farrell and Jodie Turner-Smith's performances provide an insight into the simultaneously beautiful and strenuous task of everyday life and to treasure what is truly important. Acting simply with subtle expressions is an incredibly hard skill to master and Koganata works with his actors perfectly to achieve this. Columbus has my favorite film soundtrack of all time. Featuring music from Hammock, the ambient slash post-rock duo consisting of Mark Bird and Andrew Thompson, they work seamlessly together with the imagery of the film. Koganada has previously stated, they were talking about the relationship between absence and presence in their music, which was a mind-blowing moment, and I thought they have to be the music for this film. Although not all of the tracks on the soundtrack album are featured in the film, listening to it separately provides a new layer of depth into re-watching Columbus. Few artists have had the capacity to bring out every emotion possible as much as Hammock does, and each track is named after an architect whose work is featured in the film. Their albums have entirely different tones, for example, Chasing After Shadows Living With The Ghost to the trilogy of Mysterium, Universalis, and Silencia range from dark to life-affirming.
Valkenberg is a brilliant example of the magic of music and film, combining previously used elements from another song used earlier in the soundtrack, Alio, but this time adding a perfectly integrated layer of piano. The soft timbre and dreamlike state of each track make it the perfect choice for the film. After Yang's soundtrack is by Asuka Matsumiya, and the sci-fi slash ambient element is perfectly blended together throughout the album. Its mix of emotion and life immerses the listener into the film and lingers long after the experience is over. The opening of the film is incredible, and the track featured in it provides a window into what the world would look like in this specific future. Welcome, families of force, to our monthly dance-off. We have over 30,000 families competing tonight. Are you ready? Stay in sync. For combat. Fight time! I highly recommend listening to both these soundtracks while reading or walking, and then going back and rewatching the films. The emotions you'll feel will be something special that can't really be described in words. All of these factors have established Koganada in my mind as one of the best working directors in the film industry today, and there is no doubt that these common elements featured in his films have set him apart from any other filmmaker. I'm extremely excited about whatever he does next. Thank you for creating these beautiful works of art, Koganada. I have nothing but the highest praise for both these films, and if you have seen either of them or both, please comment your thoughts on them down below. I'd love to hear what they mean to you and what you think of them. Both films are now streaming on Showtime as of July 16, 2022 if you want to check them out, and Columbus is also currently streaming on Canopy. If you haven't seen either of them yet and you just watched through the entire video, please give them a go. I promise it'll be worth it. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe to notifications down below if you enjoyed. Like and share the video with another cinephile. And as always, let me know what type of content you want to see next. Much appreciated.